So you want me to source you an amazing hands-off rent-to-rent deal, refurbed on, furnishing excellent, clients ready in the wing to move in, okay? Sound good? Check out this video. I'm Simon, I've done countless rent-to-rent -rent deals. In fact, we've built a seven-figure rent-to-rent empire. I've got a team of nine, and that's just internally, before we talk about the maintenance and the cleaners and all that stuff. Okay, and one of the most common questions I get asked is, do you source rent to rent? Will you source me a rent to rent? And the answer is always the same. No, I can't do it. I'm sorry. And I'll take you through the reasons why. Reason number one, okay, is that for me on an ethical level, a landlord trusting me and my business to look after their property a landlord or an agent for that matter saying, do you know what, yeah, we're buying into your um, business, your concept, your service, and thinking, yeah, we connect, we trust you, for then me, after the event, to then pass that on to somebody else, it leaves me naked because it puts my name and reputation on the line because if then that a uh, person that I passed the source deal on doesn't look after the property like I would, I'm exposed, okay, that's the first thing, then you might think, well, I'll tell you what, how about I manage it myself? But if I've sourced it and I'm managing it and all I'm getting is three or five grand, why wouldn't I just keep it and do it myself and get 50 grand? Because that's what my average rent to rent deal does over sort of three to five years. So it doesn't make sense for me to source a deal on. And look, the purpose of this video is not for me to just be on a high horse saying I won't source you rent to rent deals. It's mainly to try and give you an insight into why I think the concept is flawed. Um, so that is on, on sort of a surface level why I can't do it on an ethical level. On a financial level, it doesn't make sense. If a rent to rent deal is gonna generate me a thousand pounds a month for five years, that's in the region of, I don't know, 60K, let's say 50K after expenses and any voids. So I've got 50 grand to do the same thing than somebody's gonna pay me five grand for. And if you're a serious rent to renter, you're not that hard up. So normally when I see people sourcing rent to rent deals, particularly rent to HMO, that makes me feel like you need to raise money. And if you need to raise money, you're either raising money to do something else or perhaps you're brand new and you've not got money. Um, and if you've never done a deal, I don't want you to source me a deal. I'm definitely not gonna pay you for it. So that's kind of my first couple of little issues with it. Um, my, my third issue with it is typically when you source a rent to rent deal, especially rent to HMO, okay, the break even point that we're looking for after we've refurbed it, paid first month's rent, deposits, uh, fees, not sourcing, just if I sourced it myself or if you sourced it yourself, is we want to break even within six months. The cash flow is 750, okay, that basically means that you know, what, what's that, quick math, three and a half, 4,200 pound, okay, is our break even point. So if then you pay a saucer another three grand, that takes your break even point threshold from six months to 10 months. And I personally don't wanna be waiting 10 months to get my money back and neither should you because rent to rent is quick cash. If I wanted a long-term investment, I'd do a BRR. Now, in terms of serviced accommodation, it could be argued that because the margins, the ability for profit is higher, that they are more viable as a sourced property. And I would also agree, um, I, I definitely agree, because that often will solve the break-even point. But the fact of the matter is, if you source it yourself, you're going to break even way sooner than if you pay in somebody to source it. So that's why I don't source rent-to-rent -rent deals. I've just not interested. If I'm going to source it, I've already got the infrastructure, the team, the nine staff and everything I need to manage the property and get the full 50 grand. I don't want to oversaturate my area and I'm not interested in three or five grand um, when I could get more, way more. 
So be wary if somebody's trying to source you rent to rent deals, okay? Ask yourself, why aren't you keeping it yourself? Is it because you've not got the money? Is it because your area is oversaturated and then they're gonna be risking your occupancies, okay? It, it, they're not sure the area can take another one. Is it because they've not got the infrastructure to manage it? Like, ask yourself why. Um, and then ideally, try and just educate yourself so you can source your own. That being said, I do love sourcing BRRs, and that is a massive part of my Rent to Rent 2.0 strategy, which I will explore in another video. But the difference between uh, sourcing a rent to rent and sourcing a purchase is instead of you making three to five grand, you could be making 10 to 15 grand, okay? And because it's a purchase, you're getting paid at the front end for the sourcing, for the project management, for the refurb, and then keep hold of the management amongst your portfolio. That makes sense because whilst you should always have an extra five grand for the next rent to rent deal, you may not have 80 grand or 120 grand for your next BRR. Hope you find this useful. If you disagree, comment below, subscribe to the channel for weekly content, and remember, don't wait 25 years. Get creative.